I'm Jill Leovi. The book I wrote is called Get Offside. It is a exploration of the problem of black-on-black -black homicide in America. I'm a journalist. I'm actually still a working reporter for the Los Angeles Times. I covered uh, crime in Los Angeles for, I like to say, 10 years. It's a lie to myself because I don't want to think about how much time has gone by, probably about 14 years. And uh, it just took me a long time to get my head around it. The book, uh, I think, is really at the matrix of what young people coming into college are deeply concerned about right now. It is about race in America, and particularly about that antagonistic pivot point of community relations with police departments. Um, and it comes at it kind of perpendicular from a different point of view. We have uh, a catastrophic problem in this country that doesn't have a constituency, doesn't have a name, doesn't have advocacy, doesn't have political party. That problem is the uh, mass death of adult black men from homicide. Uh, the numbers, I think we all intuitively know, uh, black homicide rates have been six to seven times white rates for the, good, the 30 years that we have good data. Um, in public health terms, that's an incredible magnitude difference. Uh, and uh, some things that people don't understand about this homicide rate, it is not new. It did not come with the 60s. It did not come with urbanization. It goes all the way back. In 1950, adult black men in the US died from homicide at 10 times the rate that white men did. Uh, it's not the usual suspects. It's not poverty. Uh, in the Depression, we had some of the lowest homicide rates on record in the U.S., uh, so it's not a strong correlation. It's not guns in the 1940s. Uh, in Philadelphia, there wasn't a large av availability of guns, and you had exactly the same black male death rate from homicide, mostly with switchblades in the city of Philadelphia in the 1940s. So, this is mysterious, it's deep, it's difficult. It uh, captured me very early on because it was mysterious and I couldn't understand it and also because it's so catastrophic. I uh, had covered a lot of different uh, beats when I came to covering crime in Los Angeles. I had actually uh, covered September 11th in New York. I had uh, been a foreign correspondent in Mexico. I'd covered, uh, you know, drug crimes in Mexico and political problems there. I have never seen anything like the inside of this problem of what goes on in inner city neighbors. We, we have a lot of euphemisms. We call it inner city violence or urban violence. It's kind of the background noise to city life. It has been for a long time. Uh, but Ghetto Side is a book that goes inside. It's reported from the street uh, and uh, talks about what it's like to live it day to day what is it like for the people who lose sons and daughters and husbands and brothers? What does it look like? What does it feel like for the police who have to work with it every day? I spent, you know, probably in, in the eight years that I was embedded in um, uh, police precincts, we don't say precincts in LA, in South LA, I probably spent uh, about four of those years outside the precinct on the street, so trying to cover it from both points of view. Uh, and the book, I, uh, I, I covered many, I actually did kind of a, 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 one of those early blogs where I covered every homicide in LA County and I covered around a thousand of them. I had an abundance of cases to choose from for the book. The, the story in the book, uh, the reported story, it's a narrative, is uh, the story of a um, black homicide detective and a white homicide detective in the LAPD. Uh, the black homicide detective chooses to live very unusually in the neighborhood that he polices for ethical reasons. And his son is murdered in a street murder. Uh, and his colleagues have to solve the murder. And in following that story, uh, we delve into what this mysterious black homicide problem is. A couple things I want to say about the book. It is not a memoir. It is not about me. It is not essays or impressions. It is a, uh, I'd like to say it's a scholarly work. It is, besides um, being riven with field observations, it is, has a long bibliography and uh, pages and pages full of citations. 
And uh, it's also the, the most difficult part of the work for me was years and years of data analysis. So it is all those things. It is scholarly exploration of these issues. And it's, a, I think, an original and different take on it than what the received wisdom is about these things. And, and I think it's great for students. They can agree or disagree, but it's going to be provocative. It's somewhat controversial, but at the same time, it's been vetted. I like to say that the, uh, the Economist and the National Review and also the Guardian and the Jacobin gave me good reviews. And I've had uh, several reviewers say that you can't tell the political perspective that the book is written from, which uh, as a journalist uh, I take heart from, but also because of the work I did. I tried to just write what I saw and root it in the relevant scholarly material. And I think that uh, young people today are craving a frank discussion about race. They, they want to have opinions about Black Lives Matter and Ferguson, but uh, they're awash in um, kind of some very old, worn nostrums about it and very superficial media coverage, and they don't have the historical perspective. I, and I suspect some people in this room, remember Rodney King, um, but not everybody does, and certainly young people don't. And this is a book that's designed to give them an intellectual framework for engaging with these issues, a scholarly framework for engaging. I think it works on a lot of levels. Uh, because, you know, some will come to it for the analysis uh, and uh, the scholarship, and others who are maybe operating at a different level when they come into college will go for the story, which, by the way, is a police procedural. It's designed to be an accessible storyline that people sort of naturally know in this society how to follow a detective story. It's appealing for young people. It's every television show. It's serial, it's, uh, I forget what the one is on cable right now, but in this case, it's, it's something of it's a device. It's a device to talk about how murder was dealt with by authorities in Jim Crow. It's a device to talk about patterns of communal justice in other cultures. And uh, I think the book is quite multidisciplinary. It's a little bit of ethnography, a little bit history, criminology, and of course, uh, narrative journalism and writing. And the professors I know have used it um, for all those things. Um, and uh, I, I do hope young people read it. I think we need some fresh air on these criminal justice discussions that have been going on um, for a long time uh, and sounding the same notes. Uh, in this country, and uh, I was just reminded uh, the Marshall Project asked me to do a Q&A for the 25th anniversary of Rodney King, and I was like, ah, 25th <laughs> anniversary of Rodney King. How did that happen? But, but if you look back at LA Times clips from that period, you see the exact same quotes and the exact same things being said and the exact same remedies being suggested as as now, 30 years on, we are not moving on these issues. And so uh, Get Aside is an attempt to break through that, to go deeper, to, uh, and to, as I say, be counterintuitive in, in the thesis of the book, which is, uh, in a nutshell, that it's not over-policing, it's under-policing. It looks like over-policing, but it's actually under-policing. It's hammering people for small crimes and yet allowing impunity for violence, which is a fascinatingly strong thread in American history. In, in the South, they hammered black men for vagrancy, and they brushed it off if they were killing each other. In uh, 20th century Los Angeles, they have no resources for investigations and to deal with things like witness in intimidation, and yet they have broken windows policing. It is a very consistent thread, and it's why the homicide rates have been unchanged from uh, the pre-migration period to now. Uh, so the book takes students into that and I think invites discussion and, um, and, uh, it, and invites them both to bring in their own experiences if they know what the book is talking about and if they had no idea what the book is talking about before they got there. I've had um, um, a good response to the book. I really wrote it. Uh, you know, I, I, for years and years, I would write stories about homicide, and I would get um, 
I would get a response that was a community response. It was from the people who were affected by the homicides, and I could not, and I, at the same time, I would, I would talk to often white friends who had been raised in suburbia. They would tell me they never pulled off the freeway at certain exits, and they didn't know what I was talking about. There was such a gulf between these worlds. I really wanted to draw people in who didn't have the benefit of these experiences, and at the same time speak truthfully to the experience of um, some of the young people, like the students I talked to uh, recently at Cal State LA, where a young Latino student in the class had a father who was a police officer. Two other students in the class had recently had friends who were murdered. Uh, that's sort of the context of LA, but also um, bring people in who uh, haven't seen it before. And like I say, it's it's been vetted. It's um, has the potential to be controversial, but I've gotten a great response uh, from reviewers, and uh, I got um, a little bit raked over the coals by Tavis Smiley for being a white writer on a black su subject, and uh, we ended up having a great conversation. If you're interested in the book, I, I recommend looking that up. Um, and uh, uh, as I told him, it, he, uh, he leaned over and apologized to me after the interview. I said, Tavis, you know, it's not like I, I've been covering this for 10 years. It's not like I haven't had this conversation. Um, so uh, I would be very uh, eager for young people to read this book, and I don't really have a lot else to say. Thank you. <laughs>